بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم ریسپیکٹ چیئرمین اینڈ ریسپیکٹبل آڈینس السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا انفقوا مما رزقناکم من قبل ان یاتی یوم اللہ بین فیہ خل فیہ ولا خلت ولا شفا والکافرون هم الظالمون او ی ہو بلیو سپینڈ آر آف وٹ وی ہیو بسٹور آن یو بفور دا ڈے کمز ویئر اینڈ دیر شیل بی نو بائنگ اور سیلنگ نور فرینڈ شپ نور انٹرسیشن اینڈ اٹ از دوز ہو ڈس بلیو دیٹ ڈو رانگ ٹو دم سیلوس ریسپیکٹ چیئرمین اٹس ڈیفیکلٹ ٹو کم اینڈ سی اینی تھنگ مور آن دی footstep of the elegant speeches that have been made and the short time that I've been given to talk about uh, humanity first. It, uh, when I was thinking about what to say, it occurred to me that in Holy Quran, amongst many, many commandments, the two commandments stand out uh, quite frequently And one is unfaqr, uh, And the other, it follows right away. Whenever there is mentioned rizq, there is a unfaq that comes right after. Unfaq means to separate yourself from what you have. And rizq is the provisions that you've been provided. So whenever Allah Ta'ala talk about unfaq or rizq, it follows with unfaq. That means... God wants you to give and share what he has provided to you. And on top of that, Allah Ta'ala says that once you do that, that you will be given even more. Your rewards will be increased from 10 to 70 times. And um, my subject of humanity first, uh, is so vast that I can talk about it for hours, but uh, I can say only that it used to be my passion, but now it's my embodiment. I have been working with humanity force for many years, and I've been through many, many situations, starting with uh, the earthquake in Pakistan and the establishment of humanity force in Ghana, and then Lastly, we've been working with all the other things that have been mentioned at Marshall Islands. This humanity first follows after many blessed schemes that have been uh, established by our uh, Khulafa and our Jamaat, including Tahrik Jadid, Waqf Jadid, Nusra Jahan scheme, MTA, Tahar Har Institute, and now Humanity First. Humanity First is a landmark scheme envisioned by Khalifa al-Masih Rabi, our fourth Khalifa, and it was slow to begin with, but after, since uh, 2004, it has taken a life of its own, and it has grown, it has done such wonderful things throughout the world, and every day those things are being done, starting from the Water for Life, starting from medical camps, the gift of sight, and you name it, and uh, it has uh, continued it, and every year you see more and more of the, uh, uh, the things that are being done by Humanity First. And the volunteer, I see many volunteers of Humanity First sitting in this uh, crowd, and uh, I'm so proud of them, and I'm humbled by their efforts, what they do, and I have a few things that I've done myself. I think it will be appropriate just to mention a couple of stories so rather than go into the details why we do. Uh, well, I think it is easy to understand why we do what we do as Humanity First volunteers. And uh, the spirit of giving, and what do you give? Rizek is everything that you have. It's not just money, it's not just food, it's not, it's your skills, 
it's your time, it's your time away from family, and um, uh, everything in between. So Humanity First provides you a vehicle that can use all those uh, uh, things that you can give uh, in the service of mankind. So when you go for a mission with Humanity First, for example, you're spending your own money, you're spending your own time, you're spending your skills, you're taking care of people, and those sacrifices brings the blessings of God to you. Uh, I have been involved with Humanity First. Well, I used to actually have my own, I still do, I have, I have my own uh, NGO that I started working with and going to Africa. And then uh, Humanity First uh, came and people wanted me to uh, bring them to Africa and establish uh, Humanity First there. I realized, and of course I did that, and um, I realized that if my effort was, for example, a pickup truck, then Humanity First is a freight train that I can accomplish so much more in association with this organization that I was able to do it with my own uh, 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 organization. So my first story, when I went to Africa, it was in 2000, and uh, there was, I had a group of 14 people, and we were going to do surgeries under very meager circumstances in the University Hospital of uh, Ghana, uh, Accra, uh, Skal Korlevu. So the night before we were making rounds, there was a 26-year-old teacher who was sitting in the bed, and I was told that he is going blind. He couldn't say. We said hello to him. And I said, let's set him up for surgery for next day. That was Friday. And uh, he had a tumor, it's called craniopharyngioma, that was pushing from below on his optic nerve or nerve chiasm, which is, was, um, Dr. Son understand that uh, it makes uh, make you blind because there's a pressure. So I set him up for surgery. We didn't even have a C-arm or the X-ray capabilities, but somehow we make do uh, with that, and I did the surgery. Surgery went well. We, next day, it was uh, Saturday, Sunday. Monday, we came back, and I asked one of my associates to go and see how that man is doing. It was a woman doctor, and she came back running after a while, and I was on my way to do another operation. And she came and said, Dr. Khan, Dr. she was screaming. And I was like, oh my God, something bad has happened, this guy died or whatever. And she came and she said, Dr. Khan, he can see. And that was the moment that just did it for me. The man, she said, he was sitting on the uh, bed, reading a newspaper, looked at her and said, are you the doctor who did surgery on me? Look, I can read the newspaper. He was an expensive commodity. He was a teacher and see how many people he would affect. So then we continued year after year, and uh, make a fast forward. We were in Marshall Islands. That was year before last. And when we arrived, Rabbi Saab told us that please be careful. There's a opposition. These uh, uh, priests are spreading rumors that. The Muslims are coming, they're terrorists, this, that, and the other. So just keep a low profile. I said, okay, we will. And then we, uh, we, we made a round to the hospital, and I saw an x-ray, and I said, this x-ray is not right of the skull. And there was a screwdriver behind us. I said, it should be done again. The man said, no, sir, this screwdriver is in man's head. I said, how is that possible? So, well, they were drunk and they just somebody stabbed him in the head. I said, how is he doing? So the man is doing um, okay. And uh, I said, what do you do with these kind of th patients? I said, we send them to Hawaii or we send them to Philippines. 
said, well, then go ahead and do that. He said, no, they said you're a neurosurgeon and uh, you can take care of him. I said, have you ever done a brain surgery in this uh, hospital, in this area? He said, no, we've never done a brain surgery. So, well, then go ahead and send him. He said, uh, uh, okay. Next day I went, and then I said, have you sent the patient uh, to Hawaii? He said, no, we haven't. Uh, administration says you can take care of him. He said, do you have any equipment? Do you have anesthesia? Do no, we don't have any of that. So please send him. Next day I went there, same story. And now I was, if I don't take care of this man, they are going to say these people are no good. These Muslims come here for just wasting our time. And if I do it, it's going to be, and the man dies. So, well, it's a self-fulfilling promise. These Muslims are terrorists. They killed our man anyways. So what am I going to do? I prayed that night. It was a Tuesday night. I said, God, show me the way. And I had a dream. I had a dream that I'm doing surgery on this man, and the uh, surgery went. I do it in certain steps, the way the brain surgery is done. And uh, the man wakes up and he goes home. So I got up next morning and I thought, it felt like I've already done the surgery. Well, it hadn't. I hadn't. So I said, that's a sign from God. I told them to go ahead and take the patient to surgery. I did surgery the way I saw in the dream. The patient did well. He woke up. It was very critical. It was next to the carotid artery, next to the optic nerves, next to the very critical structures in the brain. And uh, then we came out. Mayor James at uh, Placid knows. Uh, his friend, he came uh, and he said, everybody on the island was waiting what the outcome is going to be. And we came, he said, they found out everything is fine. Jim said, doctor, you don't have to worry about it. Nobody is uh, opposing everybody. Everything is gone, they fizzled away. So these are the kind of things that you see in these uh, missions. You work under uh, stress, you work under um, no supplies, very, very little uh, um, uh, equipment that you have, and God shows miracles. This was nothing but a miracle. When we think about, when I ask people, I see hesitations that you're going to come with us, they're always concerned, how can I do this surgery? They want to go, how can I do surgery? How can I do this? Would there be enough equipment? Would there be um, necessary things, staff, whatnot? But God opens the ways, and things are done that uh, we find results that are just amazing. And uh, it's the Satan, Allah Ta'ala says, Ashaitanu Yaidukum al Fukra, meaning Satan uh, incites you to think you take your time away, you're going to lose money, you won't have income, you, won't, you worry about all the other things. But uh, believe me, it just uh, uh, it doesn't happen. You only get rewarded. You get rewarded many folds. And I will close with this, uh, the uh, next, uh, another ayah, uh, that, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَأَنْفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَعْتِيَا أَهَدَكُمْ وَالْمَوْتُ فَيَقُولُوا رَبِّ لَوْ لَا أَخَّرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ عَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ فَأَصَّدَّقَ وَأَكُنْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ That's Spend out of that which you have been provided you, to you before. Death comes upon one of you, and he says, My Lord, only if thou wouldst grant me respite for a little while, then I would give alms and be among the righteous. So you want to go back and say, you don't want to be one of them who come to the point, you say, God, send me back. Take the opportunity uh, that had been given. And of course, the essence of life in the Salati, in the Saqib, in the Mahiyaya, 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 in the